everybody. Uh, welcome to another show on painting your miniatures super fast and easy, ready for your tabletop games. Now, today we have this dragon here. Um, now, I tried to pronounce the name of it earlier. It begins with a V. <laughs> now, I can't say what this is. It's, um, somebody type it up in chat who knows what this dragon is called because I cannot actually say what it is. So we're going to move on to the smaller dragon. This is the metal young uh, dragon. This is the young fire dragon. Um, let me get this in focus and we'll, I'll explain a little bit more what we're going to do today. What I've done, I've already done the base on this miniature and I've just added some gravel. And I've gone over the gravel with some grey and I've gone over it with some black ink wash. Now as you can see I haven't primed this, this miniature because I wanted to show you how I prime my metal miniatures on the show. Very simple. Um, we've got um, brush on primer white, we've got brush on primer black, um, this is from MSP, you can buy these paints from Mighty Lancer Games um, in the UK, absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, now what I'm going to be doing is painting this one red today, so we're going to be using the brush on primer white, and it's a fantastic primer for all your metal miniatures, and you cannot, and I cannot stress this enough, you never ever paint your metal miniatures without a primer. You can get away with bones, but with your metal, you need that primer coat. Hi Tal, Scottish Andy, Carlos, my almighty Lancer Games as well. Tommy's in the house, Gerald's in the house. Who else? Is that Hamish? Yes, Goblin Squire in the house. Thank you all for coming so much. It's re it really gives me lots of confidence and a boost when I know people are coming to see me paint my miniatures. I would like to give a quick shout out to all my American friends, if they're watching or not watching, um, and I hope they see this. And that is, I hope everybody is safe with that hurricane going on in the US at the minute, because I've been watching it on the news, and that is one scary storm over there. It's in Lu Louisiana, I think. Uh, but I have quite a few friends in Texas, I think, which is quite close to Louisiana. So please, everybody, be safe over there. Okay, I'm just using a basic brush. And I'm just going to quickly add this over all the metal parts of the mini. Now, as everybody knows, metal miniatures are my favourite. Um, I, I, I paint metal. Uh, and it's so it's the weight of, of metal the feel of metal um, and I just find the, the detail is fantastic I mean lots of people prefer resin um, I find resin is very can be very um, brittle and snap very easy uh, metal is strong um, and it's just it just feels like quality when you paint a metal miniature and when you pick your metal miniature up on the tabletop, that feel and that weight is just awesome. It's a beautiful feel. I've got a little hair there. Go away hair. Go away hair. Right, that's it. Where's my tweezers? That's Molly. Molly hair coming into my room and attacking my minis. One second, where are you? I can see you. Nasty, nasty little hair. Okay, so we just quickly carry on. So it doesn't take long to prime your minis, but it's super important. It helps to stop chipping, and it gives you a lovely work surface to work from with your paints. And if you're going for a dark looking dragon, then of course you'd use that dark black undercoat. I'm going for a nice bright uh, red and orange fire dragon, so I want it to be white so I can get those colours looking nice and bright for my mini. Thank you, Mighty Lancer Games. I can't pronounce that. Vero Sitfrax. <laughs> Vero Sitfrax. There you go. I think that's correct. It 
if anybody has joined the channel who doesn't know me um, my channel is for painting or speed painting your miniatures uh, ready for your tabletop um, there are hundreds of channels on show quality painting if you want to learn how to paint your miniatures fast and get them up to a tabletop standard then you, you found the right channel uh, but if you want to go to a super AAA -A -A class level, then I'm afraid you're looking at the wrong place. Um, because it's all about getting the miniatures painted and getting them on that tabletop. There we are. So that's nicely done. Because I can let that dry now and we can move on to the bigger drain. Hello, Renegade Shank. With the bigger dragon today, what I was thinking of doing is we could do some nice wet blending. Oh, let me get this back a bit. It's quite a big dragon, this one. I was thinking of doing some wet blending on the wings. Uh, so we'll start off with a nice dark green at the top and we'll work our way down into a, a lighter white green at the bottom for our wings and just moving across the miniature. Now, what I've done with this miniature to begin with is I actually used my airbrush uh, before I came onto the show. And I sprayed the miniature with my, um, this is a model air by Vileco and it's olive green. And if you have an airbrush and you use the Bones miniatures, especially the old original Bones miniatures, um, this is guaranteed to dry on those nasty old white Bones miniatures where your rattle can primers do not work. This was, this is the original Bones plastic and it's dried perfectly using the airbrush with Vileco Air paint. I always add a couple of drops of thinner to my airbrush, um, but as you can see, it's given a nice little coat and it saves you a lot of time. Um, I'll probably do a little show on airbrushing in the future, um, but it's a little bit noisy, but um, I would like to do some shows with airbrushes. So hopefully um, I can work out a way how to film myself doing the airbrushes and we can go and do some Reaper miniatures doing our airbrush work, which will be awesome fun because airbrushing is great fun. Once you've mastered the rest of the things, airbrushing is your next step up again. And if you've got hundreds of Reaper miniatures, um, an airbrush, like you say, this, this took me, what, uh, one minute to spray green, simple. And you can do lots of little effects with that airbrush um, to save you a little bit of time as well. Mainly better for the larger miniatures, um, but um, an airbrush is a very nice purchase. Once you've got into the hobby, um, uh, I'd give it a few years before you go into the airbrush world because uh, you need to start and learn the basics of painting first and then you can move up um, into the airbrush world. Um, it's good fun and um, my, I had my first airbrush about two years ago um, and um, I use it all the time, mainly just for priming miniatures now and um, it works fantastic. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to love Shanky Boy. Okay, let's get make a start. Let's get some, again, I'm going for some olive. Um, olive is a beautiful color green. It's my favorite color green. Everybody's like, write, write that down. That's Mikey's favorite color green. We'll remember that for another competition. <laughs> A little Easter egg there, guys and girls. Right, I'm just going to do it in little stages. I've got the olive green. I've got some maggot white because I don't want bright white. Um, I better give this a shake. A little bit later on in the show, I will give you all another question um, about how to how you can win the Skeletal Dragon by WizKids Games. Uh, because in the last show, I did the question and everybody had the right sculptors and um, the correct miniatures, but they're in the wrong order. So today I'm going to say another question and it's a toughie. I won't lie, it's a toughie. Uh, and the first person to answer 
the question on the Discord channel, um, we'll win that dragon. Quite a few of you probably won't know the answer because it's uh, an old school question from a few years back. Okay then, now you're like, Argh. what I'm gonna do, I'm going straight into my green. Let me see if I can get a bit of focus on here. I think it's not too bad today. Let's have a look, let's get your bullet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a nice dark green and work our way around and down and pulling the paints down into a nice wet blend onto the wings. And so it's a nice fast paint, keeping the paint nice and wet. And we're just gonna start in the top of each of the wings or the membranes of the wings. Don't worry about going over the wing base um, because this is just your primary coat of paint. We'll be going over details later. So today I'm just showing you the wet blending and how I get my effects in the wings. It's very simple. So we've got that one in there. I'm taking some of the paint off. I need to get my tissue. Come here, Mr. Tissue. There you go. Get back into business. Okay, there we are. Let's, now we're going into that white. It's a tiny bit. And what I do, I always move my white onto my tissue so I can take it off and I've got control of the paint. And Reaper are raiding me. <laughs> so, so I'm going straight into the wet blending by pulling that green down. So we keep pulling the green using that white as a basis. And it just added a touch more green. Because the paint is wet, it's blending that color with the green. And we're just pulling the green from the top straight down into that color. Welcome everybody. Thank you for popping in. Uh, just as that my, my delicate part of the miniature, um, I get raided. <laughs> Thank you for following, Max. And remember what I said, you don't need to worry about making a mess because this is the inside of the wings. We, we start with the insides first and we work our way out and then you can cover up all your mistakes nice and simply. I mean, these wings are bouncing around at the minute, so it's not making my life easier because I'm trying to put it on camera as well. Let me try and get my hand behind it so I can control the wing because it's bouncing off the brush here so we're going straight down adding some more of that maggot white taking some of the paint off and just blending it in with lighter colors going down the wing so what we're after is we're trying to get a gradient going from that dark green to lighter green lighter and lighter and lighter until you finally reach the end and it should be at its brightest point at the tips of the wings. And it's a very fast thing to do on your miniatures. But once you've mastered a little bit of wet blending, and like I said before, you can practically do anything you want with your miniatures. If the paint starts to dry, all you need to do is mix that color quickly onto your tissue and you can quickly find the correct consistency of the greens you've been using and you can add it to the wing and you'll find it works exactly the same as wet blending. But it's a nice, fast, simple way to get a lovely effect on your wings and have that tone going up from dark to light. And again, the last one. Now I have added a green undercoat, so that will affect the brightness of the paint we're adding. Um, but I wanted it green because I'm going for a green colored dragon, so it was the way to go. I'm just going on to the tips again. This is our brightest white at the bottom, and very simple. We just fly around 
and get to the bottom of the tips of the membranes and we are done. We can add more green as we go if you want to. And it's simply, you've got your greens going down into your whites and it works out fantastic. And we do that to all the wings. Thank you everybody for joining. It's, uh, it's Reaper's fantastic raiding. <laughs> I sorry I couldn't stop. I, I'm doing the wet blending. I'm at the crucial point and mixing my colours, and then I get raided. So I can say hello, everybody now, and thank you for turning up. I was just saying to everybody, um, everybody in the US. Um, I hope everybody is fine with that hurricane. Uh, my love goes out to everybody. I know it's a nasty storm over there in Louisiana. Uh, so lots of love from Scotland, and um, hope everything is going well for everybody, and be safe. Um, okay, so we are going back to our little metal dragon. Now, as you know, my metal is the best. I, I love metal miniatures. What we've got today, we got some fresh blood. And I'm going to actually use this clear orange. And I'm going to blend the clear orange with the fresh blood for those wings. And that will work really nicely, I reckon. So first of all, is we get our fresh blood. Got my pokey stick. Need a pokey stick today. There we go, just a tiny bit of red. Thank you for following. And we're just using some of this orange. Again, pokey stick time. <laughs> Pokey stick! <laughs> oh, we all love our pokey sticks. There you go. So we've got a nice little bit of red and some orange and a very simple paint onto our little red young fire dragon. Let's move you over there. And again, we're going to do that wet blending. Now, again, from the top, this will be uh, probably be easier to show you on this one. Let's see if we can get a bit closer for you. Anyway, I think that's okay there. Now I am going to change my brushes because it's a little bit more finer. There we go. Now with this, I am adding a nice little part red at the top of the wing. And I'm just going across the wing nice and fast, keeping that paint nice and wet because the basis of wet blending is working with wet paint. Now I'm going straight into that orange and I'm going to start pulling the orange into the red and pulling it away from the red across the wing. Add in some more orange, putting the orange next to the red and then pull in with my brush which pulls the red paint down the wing with that orange. And again, we're adding some more orange. We keep going back into that orange and we just keep on adding, pulling the paint down. So you're pulling that red down with the wet paint. And each time you add, it gets lighter and transits into that orange. So it's just permanently orange by the time you get to the end of that wing. Yeah. It's a very fast and simple way to do things and it looks really nice once it's finished. There we are. What you can do is add a little bit of white to the ends just to highlight the, just the tips. There we are. As simple as that and you've got a lovely effect. You've got that red going into the orange going down that wing. And that took a couple, that, what, a couple of minutes, if that, done. Okay, I'll show you again on the other side. This will be a bit more tricky because I got to angle myself. So actually, this is gonna be very difficult. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, we're adding that red first. Yeah. 
Now working with wet blending, I find is one of my favorite things, apart from dry brushing. I love dry brushing my minutes, minis, everybody knows this. Uh, but wet blending is another way I absolutely love to do to add lovely effects to all my miniatures. Uh, blending in the colors for me works super well and it's something I love doing. Um, I get so much enjoyment watching those colors change and leaving highlights. It's lovely. I don't know, oh, sorry. Um, this, this is quite difficult in front of the camera. I'm really sorry I'm moving around here. There you go. I'll try and. It's, the angle is nightmarish. There we are. So we're pulling that paint. So the red's getting pulled into the orange towards the back of the wings. And this is all done while the paint is wet. And it's a very simple thing to do. If you notice, um, I am going only one way with my brush. I just go, I'm just following one way. I'm not going back and forth with the brush. I'm going one way. I'm not going up. I'm following down with the brush because what I'm doing is I'm pulling the paint. I'm pulling the paint down the wing. I don't want to pull the paint back up. So I keep that brush going one way at all times. Like a river. You just follow the river down the wing and you're sorted. There we are. So what I'm going to do is quickly paint the top of the wings. And again, this is going to be all red. Now, the top of the wings, I am not going to add any wet blending to because they are the tops of the wings. So I just want to quickly get some paint on there. There we go. And the same on the other side. Just quickly get the paint on. Yeah. And it's already starting to transform into a little fire dragon. Let me just take, uh, wash my brush. Oh, good. Is that Highland Lass? Yes, good. Okay, right. I am going to, I am going to uh, give you the question for, to the competition to win this dragon. Uh, this dragon is from uh, WizKids game. It's the gargantuan skeletal dragon, and it's a prize I'm giving away for my three-year anniversary on Patreon. Now, it, it's really a, a gift for my patrons for supporting me for so long. Um, now, I, I gave a question in my last show, uh, but everybody answered the questions correctly, but are in the wrong order. So what I'm going to do is give you a question today, and the first person to give me the correct answer in my Discord channel will um, win this dragon. Now, the question is, um, a few years ago, I went and helped a school... Uh, in Scotland by donating um, by donating miniatures to the school to get the children involved in miniature painting um, and um, it was to raise money for D Dungeons and Dragons books for the school now the first person who can correctly name that school on my discord channel will win my skeletal dragon okay Everybody's like, <laughs> so if you want to win that dragon, you need to. It was about three years ago, I think. And um, I think uh, we managed to get quite a few Dungeons and Dragons books for the school. Um, I sent the school loads and loads and loads of Reaper miniatures, and Highland Lass uh, is uh, works for the school, and she arranged the. Um, um, the event to raise money to start kids in Dungeons and Dragons, which is an amazing thing. Anyway, um, and it did very, very well. And uh, the school library had all the Dungeons and Dragons books. 
and um, they all started painting Reaper miniatures in their lunch breaks. I mean, I had chess club when I was a kid. I mean, this school now has a Reaper painting club. I mean, and I feel very proud because I helped with that and helped Highland Lass get that for her school. So if you can name the, name the school, you win the skeleton painted dragon and I'll send it anywhere around the world. Okay, let's get back to our painting. Right, let's carry on with our little dragon, eh? I think what we'll do here is we shall do, again, some reds and some oranges around the face. Let me see if I can get this in focus a little bit more for you guys and girls. Right, what we shall do is I am going to go around all the main areas of the dragon, which I think will be the darkest areas, around the neck here. Just freely painting, quick and easy. Uh, don't worry about mistakes when you're painting. Um, we all make mistakes and it's part of learning. Um, it's You just, just keep going, just keep painting. Um, simple as that. Thank you for following. Okay, so I've got the red areas just around the dragon, just certain parts of the dragon, look. And these are the parts that I think would be like the darkest areas for the dragon. So we're going to the underbelly and going straight down the bottom of the neck. I'm doing it nice and fast because I'm keeping that paint wet. And we're just go in there. And what we'll do, just underneath the chin of the dragon, a little chin. Now I'm going straight into that beautiful orange. This is a really nice orange. This is the uh, clear orange by MSP. And it's got a beautiful consistency. It's really nice. Now I'm just going to add that into that red and I'm going to pull it into the rest of the miniature and again on the darkest areas pulling that red out nice and fast and straight across the top of the head And on this side, just pulling the red into the orange. And from the top, we're going back down, pulling that red from the bottom up over the back of the dragon. So we're blending that darker red into the orange all the time with our paintbrush and we're using it to our advantage and we're letting the paint do the work for us. So we're getting all these lovely little highlights and shading just by using these two colours and it works across the whole miniature. Just on the tail now to the, like, to the last part of the tail. Now with the end part, which is going straight into the orange, and we're keeping this at the brightest point. Um, and we'll just move this along. And because I'm using that nice white primer coat, it's really making the colors a nice, bright, vibrant effect to the miniature. this one off. Tiny bit more pink there. So this orange and the red 
it's just working together as one um, and we just need to add a little bit of red to the back there just blend that in with the orange and on the top I'm just going to add a tiny hint of red to the top just here and just blend in the orange with the red on the back there I missed a bit and again we're going down to the shading areas and that'll be the darkest areas so we're going to keep those with the red there we and the bottom of the tail just here I think we'll go for red there as well So you've got some lovely colours going over there now. You've got the lovely orange effect with the red and it's all working beautifully with this dragon. And this is just your basic starter coat to get you into the game, you know. Um, once this is all dried, you can add a little bit of dry brush into the miniature. Um, we can start picking out the details. Um, but this is the perfect start to get this dragon looking absolutely beautiful by the time you're finished and simple and easy for your tabletop. Let me just have a quickly look on the chat room there. Yes, uh, it's, uh, I, know, uh, I know Highland Lass is out to stop doing the uh, the the D and Dungeons and Dragons games with all the um, COVID virus and everything else has been going on. It's been a terrible year for everybody. It's awful. Thankfully, we have D and D games where you can play online. Um, I mean, we all love playing Dungeons and Dragons in the house uh, with our friends, uh, but most of my best friends are. All around the world so thank goodness we got uh, roll 20 and stuff like that to actually play our games um, I think we'd be lost without uh, online games nowadays okay then um, I do have um, another dragon here as well I, I could do a little bit of work on as well I've got this one this is another metal It's got a lovely effect on the back there. Now, what I want to show you with this miniature is how you can use just inks um, to actually make your dragons pop. Um, I'm going to use a purple wash, excuse me. I'm going to use this purple wash and I'm just going to show you how simple it is to paint over white and get a lovely effect for wings and etc and stuff like that etc is very very simple I'm trying to get my words out tonight and I'm mumbling away <laughs> okay now this is a uh, purple wash and this is a very old wash from the 90s uh, but they still are absolutely fantastic and what I'm gonna do actually is because I'm scared it's gonna fall out I'm gonna use my ink wash holder made by Scottish Andy <laughs> uh, absolutely fantastic ink wash holder you just put your ink washes in it's not they're not going to spill over um, and anyway the point is you just add your purple over a nice white and all these all this here this will just pop because what will happen is all the ink will go into all those lovely little colors and it will make everything stand out and that gives you something to work from because what you can do is you can dry brush over the ink once it's dry and you can get all those raised patterns to work for you. Um, the key to painting miniatures for your tabletop is hopefully getting the paints to work for you and not you doing all the work. So all we're doing is adding that. And it's like it's like a it's like um, like magic paint. Um, those those markers you used to have back in the 80s where 
uh, you'd um, it would magically appear all the writing and stuff. Um, it's doing the same on here. It's, well, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, sometimes you do not need to spend hours and hours and hours on a miniature to make a miniature look beautiful for your tabletop. There's so many things you can do and try uh, and learn um, to make things easier for you to paint. Um, we all want to be fantastic painters, there's no doubt about that. But when you're painting hundreds of miniatures for your tabletop, you want to find the best way to get your miniatures done in a timely manner so you can play your games. And this is all that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the best way to get your miniatures looking very good for your tabletop. Um, so you can get a nice game going um, because we all have hundreds of miniatures and especially with Reaper doing their bones miniatures and we're all buying box sets and core sets. I mean, all of us have piles of shame that we need to get through. So the, this is a fantastic way to try and work out how to get all your miniatures painted nice and easily. I mean, when you're doing um, your armies on your units, yes, you spend a little bit more time on your commanders. I mean, that's natural. You're gonna have a few miniatures on the tabletop. You want to uh, a more show quality standard because they're your main commanders um, and your main miniatures. Like your, if you've got your party for D Dungeons and Dragons, you'll have your adventuring party of say four or six adventurers and you're gonna spend a lot more time on those six miniatures because you know that they're your main characters. So you get a little bit more love going into those miniatures too. But when, you've, when you have like 200 goblins to paint, you're gonna be chucking that green on as fast as you can. Um, so if you can find a fast way to paint that miniature using your greens, um, you, do that, you do it that way. Um, as you're just looking for a quality to look good on your tabletop for your games. Has the um, has the hurricane settled at all in the in the USA? If any, does anybody body know? Um, because the last the last I saw on the news, um, it was um, reaching 180 mile per hour winds in the US. 180 mile an hour winds. I mean, that is scary. I mean, Shank, you live up that way, don't you? I mean, I don't want any of my goblins getting hurt, that's for sure. So there we are, that's just a basic idea of how an ink wash can transform um, a very simple miniature and just give a lovely effect. Now, let, before I stop, let me show you what I do as well, um, because with ink washes you get pooling, and I use the um, cotton buds or Q-tips. Uh, there's lots of people call them different names, and all I do is I just go across with my cotton bud and just pick up the excess pooling of your ink. Um, it's a fantastic way to keep an eye on your ink and make sure it's not pooling on your miniature, because if it pulls, it just looks horrible when it dries. Yeah, I think, um, uh, Den, I think for the uh, contrast, I think for the contrast paint, um, I f I, I'm not sure. I think they, uh, they, they recommend uh, black. I think they recommend black uh, for the contrast paint. Um, hello, Muses Torch. Touch, Torch, you damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. 30 mile an hour winds. That's not too bad. 
I tell you, I was, wa I was watching the news and I was, I was terrified for you guys out there. It is that was some scary stuff. That was some scary stuff. Okay, let's move back on to our green dragon. Now, as you can see, this swing here is a little bit floppy. So I might not, I might try to actually add a metal pin to this wing at a later date. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to show you though, is I think we shall move on to the base on this one. And I'll show you how I quickly add my base uh, to the miniature because I know you all love bases. And you all, you all like to know how I do all my little bases. So I'm going to quickly show you how I do my base. Um, if I can find my glue. There's my glue. Now for my bases, I just use this cheap and cheerful PVA glue. It's PVA glue. And all I do is I use an old blister pack. There we are. I don't waste anything in my miniature painting. All the blister packs, I always use the, the little packs to put my um, glue in or my paints in for mixing. So there's always something to be used and not wasted. Um, so all I'm doing, I add a little bit of the PVA glue to the, my little blister pack. Now, I collect all my stones and little parts from the beach so I have all sorts of bits and bobs. Um, I got sand from the Ork Orkney Islands, where Highland last uh, lives. Um, I got all sorts of goodness. I got little pebbles. I got stones that, are, that have been sent to me from Night, Night vs. Dragon. Um, I mean, people send me little bags of stones from around the world, and I add them to my bases, and it's fantastic. Um, it's it's the whole hobby is just amazing the whole hobby is just absolutely amazing um i'll give a i'll give a shout out to mighty lancer games talking of hobby supplies now uh, mighty lancer games are the i would say the number one miniature shop in the uk um if you are my patron you also get 10 percent off all their products in their shop and that is a huge saving if you live in the uk uh, Mighty Lights are going to do all your basic materials and everything if you want to um, buy the basic materials. Um, and they do all the paints and everything else. Um, absolutely lovely people, super friendly. Um, welcome. Okay, let me um, move back on. This is, I read chat and then I forget my flow. <laughs> Shank. <laughs> okay, let me move this out of the way. Um, let me um, uh, if Muses, Muses, Muses touches in the chat. Um, I am going to be painting with uh, Muses touch <laughs> later, um, later in the next couple of weeks, I think, uh, whenever she's ready, and she's going to be joining me on the channel. Uh, she is a miniature commission painter and she is fantastic and she is also a very lovely person and she's going to be joining me on my show to have a little paint along doing some Reaper miniatures I hope so um, I'm looking forward to that right what you need for your PVA glue is we need an old manky brush and all we're doing all we're doing is adding Hello, Jimmy the Brush. <laughs> Welcome. Awesome. J Jimmy the Brush. Uh, if nobody knows who Jimmy the Brush is, you need to follow that guy. He's amazing. He is absolutely amazing. Um, he has he, he has a Twitch channel and um, awesome guy. So if you uh, love miniature painting, he does all sorts of miniature painting, not just Reaper. He does the Warhammer, every, everything. So yeah, give him a, give him a shout. Give me a shout out and follow him because he's a lovely guy. Okay, let's move on. Um, all I'm doing for the base is I'm adding some PVA, PVA glue to the base. And it's a super simple thing to do. But adding 
stones and adding a bit of texture to all your bases it just enhances that miniature 100 percent um everybody knows that all my goblins know they have to add a base to their miniature for me to accept it in the goblins <laughs> in the goblin army um it's just it just adds a little bit of your own to the miniature i mean the sculptors do all the hard work sculpting these amazing miniatures for us to paint um but adding your own base is you adding your part to it so it's a part of part of you is going into that miniature a part you know as well as your painting of course so i just like to add some rocks and some stones um i like to make little things out of air drying clay and stick them around but the simplest thing to do is just add some PVA glue onto your base. Um, I, I use Base Boss bases. Uh, these are from Reaper. Um, I've been using these for years. And they do all the bases in 25, 50, 75, 120s, 130s, 150s, 180s. They do them in ovals, squares, slotted bases. They do them flying bases. Um, they have every single base you could possibly imagine. Um, so they they got you covered for whatever you need okay let's move on I don't forget to wash your brush with that glue because it will go hard and your brush will be in the bin the following day hi Mokai it's always nice to see you okay so our glue is on there. All I'm going to do, I'm going into this sand here. This is just a, this is just a coarse grain sand from a local beach. I think, I'm not sure if this is the, one of them from the Orkney Islands. Uh, my partner went to see Highland Lass uh, for a week, and she came back with all this sand and rocks and stones. <laughs> Every time we go to the beach, I <laughs> come back with bags of stones and things. Uh, okay. Okay, so we just dip our mini, get it in there, nice and deep like. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> did I just say that? <laughs> okay. So what we do then is we. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm blushing now, aren't I? Uh, right, what we do then is just tap off the, um, <laughs> I'm Michelle, <laughs> um, we just tap off the excess and then we use our thumb to, uh, <laughs> we use our thumb to take off the excess bits and bobs. <laughs> and there we are, that's how simple it is to just add a simple basic base to your miniature, just making sure we take off the excess because what I find with many painters, um, they'll do a lovely paint job and they'll do a lovely base, but what they do is they don't take off the excess going around, going sorry, going around the rim of the base, and that looks messy. So what we do, we make sure we clear, clean, clean up the rim of the base, and once it's painted, it looks much more cleaner and sharp. It's nice. Right, I need to get my lid back. Okay, we got 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my fire dragon. Move that one over there. Cause he's actually a bit floppy tonight. I think it's very hot in here. I need to support these wings. Um, so let's move back to the fire dragon and see what we can do for the last 10 minutes on the show. It's about dry. No, he's still, he's still, he's still, still wet. Okay, we'll go back to this one then. What I'll do is I'll carry on with another wash on here. Um, in fact, what I can do is I can show you some wet blending with purples before we finish the show. <laughs> oh. 
I know. Oh, I, I, I talking. Of, I, you know, I, <laughs> I'm look, I can't talk. I'm looking at chat. I hate you all so much. No, no. <laughs> I was looking at this um, uh, little light we had, the the blindy light from Reaper, and quite a sad little thing. But I, I was do, doing this all day yesterday. E T. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> oh dear. Blindy stick. Yeah, I, I if you don't know, I did um I did the unboxing of the Mega Pack uh the other day. And um I took this out of the box and uh I blinded myself. It is really, really bright. Um <laughs> just like this, it's crazy stuff. <laughs> okay, let's do some quick wet blending with some with some purples. Purple is a beautiful colour to do wet blending with. Um, I know. Then let me see. Let's see. Do, 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 blah 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 blah. Oh, there we go. Now I love wet blending. Um, I wanted to show you some dry brushing tonight as well, but of course we're not going to have enough time now. I think, um, like I say, an hour is much, is long enough for me to do a show in. Um, I mean, I can talk, but I can't talk for that long. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is quickly fly through this. Let me get this in focus for you. There you go. All right, I'm just going to start again around all the areas that are going to be my darkest points. So it's very simple. We're just going around the arms, around the thighs, around the base of the tail, around the wrists. Around the back of the head, and again under the chin of the dragon. These are our points of interest, and it's the points where the shadows lie in Mordor. <laughs> So now I'm just adding that white now and this is pulled with the purple and it gives a beautiful effect instantly because you're blending the white with the purple and making a lighter tone. And we're just taking some of the paint off, adding that to the purple, moving down, pulling the purple out with the paint and again from the bottom up. So what you're doing is you're using the darkest purple as your shade and then you're adding that white, pulling the purple down to meet up in the middle and it gets lighter and lighter just by adding that white. And it's a very simple and effective way to paint your miniatures fast and look good if you are trying to get a lot of work done. And all I'm using is purple and white. Again on the tail, we're just pulling that paint from the tail and as the get further away we're just adding more white and the purple gets lighter and lighter until you're almost completely white at the end of the tail. Right, I better take some paint off this brush, it's getting overloaded. Move back 
onto our head of the dragon. Now, once again, I am pulling the paint using my white up across the top of the head of the dragon because I want to keep that the lightest source on top. And we're using the purple as our palette actually on the dragon. So you're kind of mixing the paint on the dragon and producing your effects on the go. And while it's still wet, you can do all sorts of stuff with your paint. And like I say, this is just your first basic initial starter paint. Um, once this is all dry, you can start adding in all the details. But what it is, it gives you that initial start to the dragon. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back, because the paint is still all wet, I'm going back over the highest areas uh, with just that white and just touching up the tops of the knees, top of the chest and the muscles on the arms and just the tops of the tail. So this is roughly where I would think the light would be hitting this miniature. Um, and it's a fast and simple way to add a light source going down onto your miniature. There we are. Just like so. And there we are. On the thigh you can see the lighter. Lighter at the top. Lighter on the top. Back of the neck, we'll add a bit more there. Those muscles. Top of the hand. And the muscles. And that's quite simply and easily done for adding a wet blend to the purple. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mockery. Give it her armpit head. <laughs> oh. Well, there we are. We're coming up to the end of the show again. That was a fast hour. I hope you all enjoy what I'm doing. Um, there's, um, I got quite a few things planned uh, for the future. Um, as you all know, uh, on Sunday um, I do a Wiz Kids uh, painting uh, live stream, um, and this Sunday we have the unboxing of the complete Wave Twelve Wiz Kids. Um, Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and Pathfinder uh, miniatures. So if you're interested in Dungeons and Dragons and you like WizKids miniatures, then I hope you tune in to see that show on Sunday um, because that will be really good fun because I haven't even opened the box myself to see what's in the Wave 12. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. Now on Saturday, um, I'll be doing my next stream and I'm not sure what we'll be doing yet. I've got loads and loads of miniatures I need to paint. Um, I'll probably put a poll out on my Discord channel and we'll start going and seeing how we get on from there. Hi Tal, I did see you there. Now uh, Tal is um, an awesome guy, he's someone I play Dungeons and Dragons with every single month. Um, he's my, uh, he's one of my best friends online with Renegade Shank and so many other people. But uh, Tal is um, um, one of my very special friends because um, uh, he's he's very similar to me. He's got the same attitude, same as Renegade Shank. We've got the same mindset, and when you got the same mindset, um, you become friends for life because it's very hard to find friends who <laughs> think the same way as him. Um, and we're always we're always trying to kill each other off in our Dungeons and Dragons games. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there we are. Thank you everybody for turning up and all my love to everybody and Reaper Miniatures for raiding the channel. I think it's fantastic that you're supporting me this way. Um, it's um, absolutely beautiful painting Reaper Miniatures. 
Um, and doing a live show, I thought I'd never do. I mean, three years ago, if you said to me I was going to do a live show on Twitch, I'd have laughed in your face and I'd have probably had a heart attack and fall on the floor. Um, so it's taken a big, it's a big leap for me to do a live stream. Um, but I'm doing it and I intend to keep doing it. So I think we're doing okay. Anyway, love to everybody. Thank you so much for popping in. And I hope to see you in the next stream. So I'll say goodnight. Thank you, Paladin. <laughs>